Welcome to the Chimney and Fireplace Success Network, a weekly broadcast sponsored by CVC Coaching, hosted each week by industry speaker, coach, author, and educator, Jerry Eisenhower. Our presentations are produced to assist business owners and managers in turning their business dreams into their business realities. And now, here's your host, Jerry Eisenhower. And I want to welcome you to another episode of the Chimney and Fireplace Success Network. CBC Coaching is, excuse me, CBC Success Group. I keep forgetting we have rebranded to CBC Success Group. What we do is we provide all types of business services to help people just like you move your business and take it from your dreams into your realities. And we sponsor this episode every week. So we hope this is helpful to you. So in our last episode, we had Cheryl Eisenhower, and Cheryl's a member of our team here at CBC Coaching. And this week, we're going to be talking with Brandy Biswell. And Brandy's going to be sharing with you one of the key ingredients of hiring people and getting them on board to do it properly. And that's what's called the onboarding process. And I've seen a lot of people that have different ideas. As far as I'm concerned, Brandy is the best in the business of this. That's why she's a member of our team here at CBC Success Group. So, Brandy, you out there with me ready to rock and roll today? I sure am. Thanks for having me. You got it. You know, that's everything. People tell me, boy, I love to listen to Brandy talk. She just has such great advice. So let's start with the first question. When we say the word onboarding, what exactly does that mean, Brandy? What are we trying to encompass in the new hire onboarding process? Yeah, well, it's summertime. So where my mind goes to with onboarding is I think of like onboarding a cruise. So you're getting on board to take this marvelous vacation. When we're onboarding our new team members, we're bringing them on board into our company. We're giving them a taste of what our culture is. We're orientating them to all of the things that we have to offer to them as they progress in their career with us. You know, when you um, onboard on a cruise, you have to go the first yeah. night to the muster station and find out what to do in a case of an emergency. That's part of onboarding as well with our chimney companies. We're giving them all the information that they need um, for every situation that they may encounter with their career with us, as well as just welcoming them and showing them who we are and who they've come to work for. Yeah. And, you know, let's give a, you just gave a great example of going on a cruise. And like right now, we're real lucky you have found the time to do this because you and Jeremy are going to get on an airplane in just a few days and heading off to this magic uh, holiday vacation in Hawaii. So you're preparing to board that plane right now. Am I correct? Yes. So I, um, Jeremy and I are fortunate enough to have been married 20 years. I guess I'm showing my age. And so we are headed to Hawaii to celebrate this momentous occasion and renew our vows. And um, so as you mentioned that, I've actually been spending the last three weeks onboarding my new office manager in preparation so that I can go on this trip and not have to worry about anything back home. And, you know, this shows out where onboarding is so critical. You just mentioned the key thing. You have just brought in a new office manager. And be honest with you, from my dealings with her at this point, she seems like she's going to be a super addition to your staff. You lost a good person that just left there, but the onboarding was critical for her success. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And I've invested a lot of time in her success, and I think it's going to pay off. She's, she's phenomenal. Right. And also with our clients, we are seeing the onboarding paying off because with clients that you're working with, we are bringing on new team members. As far as we even have a new general manager that you assembled a onboarding process for someone to run the entire company. How's that working out, Brandy? He is also doing fantastic. You know, I think the problem, Jerry, is that a lot of companies they want to wing onboarding or just fly by the seat of their pants. And, and a lot of times I find that that comes out of desperation. So maybe they're hiring in the wrong time of the year. So they've waited till October or November. They've known all summer long they needed people, but now they're waiting till the last minute and they need laborers out in the field or they need someone answering that phone. So they kind of bring them in and just out of desperation, kind of throw them to the wind. And they don't invest that time in the person to train them up and bring them up properly 
properly. So with this, this new person that we've brought in with this company, we've invested the time to bring him up properly and slowed down and not worried about all that he's going to do for us because that's going to come. We've worried about all we need to teach him and train him so that he can be very successful in this position. Correct. And since we're both working with this company, I can assure you I've never seen anyone in the management role coming on as rapidly as he has. And I'm going to gauge a lot of that, Brandy, to the onboarding process that you assembled for this position, which was very deep, very detailed, went from week to week, day to day, what we wanted to get accomplished. Now, as we go through this, would you agree that you and I are learning things that we would probably apply to another general manager hire if we had another one come in behind him? Absolutely. And that's the key thing about onboarding as well. Like there's a there's a formula for success for each company and it's going to look a little bit different for each company, but there's a general formula to follow and then we tweak it from there. And then as the company grows, we continue to have to tweak little things here and there to fit our growth. Okay. So I'm going to ask you this question and I'm going to call this the Brandy process of onboarding because you've taught me a lot about this process, Brandy. So what are the critical steps in the Brandy onboarding process? <laughs> well, so the process really starts even before that first day, even before the candidate gets there that first day. So we've made the offer, we've gone through all the background screening, et cetera. I know Cheryl and you delved into that um, in the last podcast. We want to start then getting things set up for them before they even arrive. So we want to get their space set up. So if it's an office person, we want to have their desk ready to go and their phone ready to go and make sure their computer works. Start getting them login credentials. If it's a technician, we want to get their iPad technology ready. We want to get their space, their cubby, their safety kit. We want to get all of that ready so that when they walk in day one, they feel secure that we're setting them up for success and they see that we've been preparing for their arrival. Um, you and I've talked before, Jerry, it's so, so important on that first day to welcome them as a team and have signs up and really kind of make it a party that they're here. We want them to feel welcome. They're scared. They've made a huge change. Most people that come into this industry were not working in it previously. So they have not only made a job change, they've made an entire trade and career change. So they're nervous. So we wanna make sure that we welcome them with open arms. We wanna make sure that the team is inviting to them. And then from there, we wanna spend that first day, of course, doing the things we have to do, right? So we have to get their employment paperwork in place. That's just something that's gotta be done. And then we wanna spend the time going over that employee manual with them. Uh, going back to my cruise example, I think that's just on my mind because it's summer. You know, when you board the cruise and you arrive to your room, you've got all of this um, paper and information telling you of the events that are happening and where you'll go to eat dinner and where you'll go if you need first aid. And we're doing the same thing with the employee manual and going through it with them line by line, sentence by sentence. I like to do a lot of storytelling during that time period so that they can hear real life examples of things that have happened in our company and why that policy is in place. And then it's very, very critical that that first day we get them on an online education platform, CVC Basecamp, and have them start Chimneys 101. Because again, they've come in from another trade, from another career, and a, a chimney cricket means nothing to them. A prefabricated fireplace, they're going, what is that? All this verbiage that if you remember back to when you first got into the industry, it sounds so foreign. So we want to get them right away, day one, watching Chimneys 101 and starting to assimilate to that verbiage that they're going to hear us use and they're going to hear in the morning meetings so that it's not so foreign to them. Yeah. So that's day one. I can keep going into other days. <laughs> well, that's day one. But the whole thing is the onboarding process, and we're going to talk about this a little more later with some other questions, is an ongoing process. But what you're doing, and I want, and I want our listeners to think, Think about the first time you would walk into a room full of people and you don't know anyone and everyone else in that room knows everybody else. And what happens often, do, do you understand the term anxiety, Brandy, where people would enter this with anxiety? Oh, absolutely. I think we've all been there on our first days of work in any jobs we've had. Right. So part of what Brandy is doing is trying to acclimate them <clears throat> similar to what a kindergarten teacher does. 
A kindergarten teacher gets a person that's never been to school before and has got to acclimate them to the way the school operates. They're not going to have mommy and daddy to go to through the day, so they've got to acclimate to a new way. And in today's world, we also have to remember we're dealing with a different generation. Now, one of the neat things about Brandy, I think Brandy understands younger generations more than many of us can. And she understands how to make this connection with people. The other thing about Brandy, Brandy is very diligent about what she wants people to do. So even though Brandy is probably the nicest person you could ever meet, Brandy is also dedicated to these people do toe the line. They follow the rules. And that's what you're making evident on that first day. Would that be correct? That's correct. I want to let them know the expectations that the company has for them. I've already got a feel for their expectations in the pre-hiring process. So now it's time to let them know what are the company's expectations for them. And part of that is their onboarding. How do I expect them to progress through that process? What are the systems that we have in place that they'll encounter during that process? And what do I expect them to achieve? And when that onboarding process is complete, when we wrap that up, what do I want them to have learned from that process? Yeah. Now, as you're listening to this, you may think this is a pretty heavy investment that I'm going to be making into someone who's not even proven themselves as worthy of this investment. When you think of this, Brandy, why is this so important to make this investment into your people? And where's the payback for this? Where's the ROI on this time? The research tells us and shows us that if we put the onboarding process in place and we put the time and the investment and the energy, and it's a lot, I'm, I'm not going to kid anybody about that. It's a lot of time, it's a lot of energy. I'm exhausted when I'm doing onboarding, when I've been doing it these past three weeks with my office manager, I go home at the end of the day and I am mentally and physically exhausted from it. But the payoff comes when we have a very well-trained person in place that knows their job, knows their expectations, knows that if they need to call in sick or if they have an emergency, they know the processes to follow for that because we've given them all that information in their onboarding process. They know that if something happens with the vehicle or in an accident, they know what to do with that because we gave them all that information in their onboarding process. Now we have a well-rounded employee that research tells us is going to be with us a lot longer than if we had not taken the time to go through that process. Right. So the key thing that Brandy also said in the onboarding process is we are explaining our expectations. And I think that's where a lot of people fail. They think people know what our expectations are. But if you, Brandy mentioned research. This is one of the things that if you do research, you're going to find out that they don't know what your expectations are. They might not have dealt with, might not have worked for someone that has the expectations that you do. May never have worked with for a company that tracks and measures everything, that holds accountability. Randy, do you share with these people that you're going to be holding them accountable to the expectations you set? Yes, it's one of the things we go over on day one. Um, you know, I show them in the employee manual. We use a point system here. Um, I show them that point system. They sign off on it. I show them what quizzes and what uh, formula I want them to follow in our online learning platform, CVC Basecamp, and when I expect for them to have those completed and have those done, and what I expect for them to have learned from those. Um, so setting those expectations from the very beginning, from day one, is critical to their success. The worst thing that would happen is we get three, four, or five weeks down into it, they're unhappy because they didn't know the expectations, or there's an emergency, something comes up because they didn't know the expectations, and that is on us, the employer, for not making those clear. So the payoff, the ROI for Brandy and Jeremy is, you've just invested three intensive weeks of onboarding, and now, you're able to go to an airport on Monday morning and feel confident that everything is taken care of at your business by your new office manager. Would that be correct? Yes. Does she still have a lot to learn? Absolutely. No one can learn this business in three weeks, but she knows the basics. She knows my expectations. She knows our procedures for while we're gone. So I feel very comfortable now leaving and knowing that she has it under control. She will work closely with my director of operations while we're gone for them to really take care of the business. And so for three weeks, I have not left her office. I have been with my laptop right beside her the entire time 
We did everything together so that she saw everything I did. We ran payroll together. We did all of the things that an office manager is expected and required to do together for the last three weeks so that she feels comfortable in it and I can go off and enjoy my time. Correct. She yeah. even knows that next week and the next while you're gone, that if they run into a technical issues, you've given them a backup system to call, which is me. That if they have a problem, they're aware that they can contact me to help them get through these problems, right? Correct. That is the benefit of being on the CVC team and using CVC coaching is I just, they, they know anything, you can't get a hold of us, you call Jerry. Right. It's like, you know, next week, you know, one of your secretaries, I've got a call scheduled for next week to work with her to get her prepped to take her IRC test. And the, just from the emails, I think I've been able to figure out how we can move her to that level very rapidly in this phone call. So after we've onboarded them, Brandy, what do you do next? How do we make successful people after we went through the onboarding process? Well, we continue to train them. We continue to incorporate them into our culture because that's not something that happens overnight or in a week or two. Um, so we continue the learning. So the learning doesn't stop at the end of that onboarding process. The learning should never stop. So we continue to assign courses to them and provide them that continuing education. We continue to feed into them. Um, we continue to have the social activities with the whole company so that they're getting acquainted and feeling a part of the team. So that the training really never stops. The onboarding is just the initial stages. Yeah, and there's things like you provide them treats. I mean, one of the things that we talked earlier today was one of our clients got popsicles. So when the guys come in on hot days, hey, you got a, call, you got a cool popsicle, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we provide, it's, it's really hot in Kansas. I mean, I think it is there where you're at too, Jerry, but I feel like, you know, I just want to work in California, but it is so hot in Kansas City. So last week we were in the 110 degree temperatures. And so we provide them with Gatorade. We provide them with cool rags, sun protection. And then at the end of the day, yeah, they come back. We have snack boxes. We have ample drinks. We have popsicles, just things that continue to make them feel like, hey, Flues Brothers really cares about me more than just what I bring to the company. They care about me as an individual. They care about my health and safety while I'm out there. That's it. You know, and that's what Brandy and Jeremy have done at Flues Brothers. Even though Brandy is a member of our team here at CV6 Success Group, this is more from Brandy Biswell, who does this in her own office. And this is the systems that she's developed up that's helping other people around the country. This is what we're finding. People are moving to a higher level, but it's people like Brandy Beswell that's helping them get there, who's dedicated to their success and do it in a, in a great way. So Brandy, if people wanna get in touch with you, tell them how to get in touch with Brandy, except you're not gonna answer their questions <laughs> while you're in Hawaii, right? Exactly. I am, I'm taking that time to really focus on my husband. Um, so yeah, I, the best way to really get in touch with me is just to shoot me an email, which is the brandy at the CVC success group.com. Brandy is with an I, so it's B-R-A-N-D-I. And just um, send me an email there. I'm always here to help, happy to help. Um, we've been setting up onboarding processes with the companies we work with and seen it be very successful and would love to have com help companies out out there that are listening that feel like you know they just need help getting the process put in place they they have a general idea of what they want to do but they need help getting down to the details that's it so if you want to reach out to brandy just email her at brandy that ends with an i brandy at cbc success group.com and with that we're going to end this episode of the chimney and fireplace success network sponsored every edition by the cbc success group check out what we offer we have hiring systems where we can help you hire we have onboarding systems training systems coaching systems we feel like we provide the best resources for business owners in the chimney venting and hearth industry that truly want to turn their business dreams into their business realities so join us next time here on the cbc success group we look forward to you joining us it's an honor it's a pleasure and truly it is a privilege to be able to speak to you like this thanks for joining us here each week at the chimney and fireplace success network sponsored by cbc coaching providing you the coaching and educational outreach services you need to move to your dream destination in business and in life